said during his first magistrate's appearance, which was nine years ago yesterday, and it was at Horse Ferry Courts, and that they moved his next appearance to Belmarsh Prison, to Woolwich Courts, which is a court that's designed for, well, initially for the IRA, for, for terrorist uh, cases, um, and has a tunnel linking this you know, bomb-proof court into a Category A prison. Now that's, that's setting, that's setting him in a certain context. And uh, at the magistrate's level, it's pretty much a circus everywhere. And I, I, the real battle will be at the appeal level. There's no avenue right now to appeal against his current uh, state of incarceration or persecution. Well, the, the UN ruled that he was being arbitrarily detained and the British government just ignored the UN. As they do. Thanks very much. But when is a good time to design a workable system that serves the people? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, think, you know, I think that what concerns me, uh, hopefully we're all struggling to do that in our daily lives, but when they get one of our people, I know not all of us have to go to prison, but when they take one of our people, we have to begin to mobilise and defend them. And, you know, the way Julian Assange is presented is either like, by well, the mainstream media, is like Gollum, something that people have a visceral distancing from, or, uh, or some kind of hyper-intelligent hyper alien life form. And he, he isn't, he's an ordinary person. And he's an Australian, and we should be very proud of that. And if you grew up or were active in the anti-war movements of the 70s, 80s or 90s, you were participating in forming his conscience and his activism, and that led to a professional life as a journalist and publisher. And uh, when he was taken in England, I really, uh, I remember this, uh, I know it's very controversial here in Northern Italy, but the first thing that was in my mind was, Queenslander, you know, he's born in Townsville. <laughs> and it's something, you know, very state of origin. And uh, I was like, I could relate to this guy. I know where he came from. I came from very similar, you know, growing up in those movements of the 80s and 90s and stuff like that. And um, you've got to feel as though they've got your brother in jail in England, you know? And, yeah. and there's an absence of that. There really is, you know? And yeah. he was well placed to lead a generation of techie kids, and they knew that, and they took him out. Yeah. They really took him out, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, Canary in the coal mine, as they said, that if we let him go, then we are all lost. Yep. Thank you. Given uh, on top of the cruelties that are being inflicted on Julian at the moment, I reckon one of the worst must be that he can't speak for himself. You know, a guy like that who's into communication and so on, not being able to defend himself, speak for himself, must be awful. And I'm just wondering also, Mr. Shippen, Given all that, how you personally deal with that, deal with that, you know, your own, your son subjected to that, not only from the state, etc., but from, from the public. And so how do you actually process that stuff? And uh, I applaud you for doing it, absolutely for doing it, please. Well, um, uh, I've been going. You know, as you know, I've been going there every Christmas uh, since Julian's been in. I go over there for 10 days. But what we mostly talk about are uh, children, friends, uh, women, of course, and, um, and a little bit of politics, but not much. But, and I don't, I've never been involved in WikiLeaks at all. These days, uh, I go and um, speak with uh, Julian and he uh, makes suggestions uh, that I speak for him uh, and guidelines. For example, the fact that it's a European publication, WikiLeaks, is a, a, a Julian idea, not mine. A, a very powerful idea um, because uh, this uh, uh, extraterritorial judicial kidnapping or abduction of Julian extends itself to the CEO of Huawei judicially abducted in Canada and also to Victor Boot who was a G 
judicially abducted and got plenty of IDs in the United States in the jail. This is a policy, judicial abduction, is a policy put into place over the last 10 years by the United States, rewriting extradition agreements with every country that would accede to those uh, so-called reforms, Australia in particular. So it's a policy of empire to be able to intimidate and kidnap or abduct anybody that either has information that's very special, like the CEO of Huawei or Julian. It's a policy, 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 policy. The same when you see a drone blowing up a wedding party. The very high point of a small community is the wedding, uh, calling the band, the marriage of their finest young people. We celebrate it all together. We go down and celebrate. We cast a spell around them so that they may fructify and carry the community forward. They blow them up. It's not accidental. It's policy, policy, policy. The way you pacify a people is to destroy their children, their policies. The same with what's happened to children. It's an act of policy, and we must understand that and not allow it to happen. How on earth do you stay resilient? We've asked about Julian, he walks up and down his three metre cell. You've been doing this for so long. Um, Sally, I think, mentioned there's not many people who's had a child detained by a, overseas by a, a regime. I have also. And yet yeah, mine was for six months. Yours is something like nine years. My son was detained by the Indonesian military because he went as a young guy to the witness, the Reverend in East Timor, and then on a boat which landed up in West Papua out of the frying pan into the fire. His, he went through a trial, 27 years, espionage. I was an absolute basket case. I went over there and I couldn't act. I couldn't, I couldn't just face that. And you spoke of Alexander Downer. I rang him on Christmas Day, 1999. And he said, make sure that if I'm detained by a military regime, I, you're on my team. But I just faded. I couldn't handle it. And thank God he got out after six months. But how do you go on? Look, I just go on. I don't know how I go on. I just go on. I mean, you know, I talk to him sometimes. You forgive me. But I, I, what else are you going to do? Um, Anyway, and it's no great burden to be amongst you, if I may say. I travel up to Brisbane for events, the actions specifically, because nothing's really been happening around here myself. Um, so I've got two questions. The first one is, rally-wise, are we better off to organise buses to go and join these guys in Brisbane, um, or do a, do something local here, like a serious, what we used to campaign here for anti-war and different things, in Byron, um, the Cavern Bar, the meeting place, and the summer's here, so all the tourists are in town. And my second question is about the Espionage Act update in 1961 that no one ever seems to talk about. Well, online anyway, it's probably very sensitive. I've heard Chris Hedges mention it and a couple of people, but no one really talks about it. And 
it was an update that um, extended it to every all citizens in the world, not just US citizens, and no one ever talks about that. Thanks. The act of the United States Empire in instituting universal jurisdiction, as you mentioned, and also I went on about in, in, uh, in judicial abductions, is uh, the unipolar world trying, the unipolar state trying to manifest itself in every direction. As you can see, it's failed miserably, but horribly destroyed eight countries, displaced millions, killed a million people. But it's coming to an end, and you can clearly see that. Um, they've lost military superiority to, to the Russian Federation. They've lost economic superiority to the Chinese, the People's Republic of China. Also, they've lost the imagination to grasp something so fantastic as to re, to develop from Xinjiang, from Western China up to Lisbon. Fanta the, all that area, rich in resources and intelligent people needing d d development rather than plunder. So I, I in the in the long term, I I don't worry. It's just uh, how do we get Julian out of jail? Um, you know, we're gonna, can I get to the airplane in time? Little things like that. And how can I make my daughter happy? I, I would try to bring her here. She's only little, but, but uh, she wouldn't come. <laughs> I think um, three things worth doing is one is solidarity, that's thinking of him, praying for him, writing to him, uh, scrawling his name on a wall, yeah. um, and that can be done anywhere. Uh, two is targeting uh, groups uh, that should be concerned. I know Extinction Rebellion, one of their three demands is tell the truth. Well, that's why Julian and Chelsea and Jeremy Hammond are in jail today, um, and they will have people in jail. So. It's, it should start worrying about jail solidarity yeah. quick. Yeah. And uh, the third thing is creative tension. But like the war goes on. The war in Iraq, they're just deploying thousands of US troops back there now. It hasn't stopped. Oh, the war in Vietnam didn't stop in 1975. They embargoed it. They supported Pol Pot against Vietnam, etc. Yeah. So it's a, the wars go on. The anti-war movement collapsed, you know. And, and what's lack, lacking is creative tension, you know. Like I, I grew up and I still live now on the back of Gallipoli Army Barracks, you know. My mother had three uncles who went to the Somme through there. I grew up during Vietnam. They were going to Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, and it's just daily grind. You know, how would any young person have any doubt about... You know, 18 years in Afghanistan now, you know, and uh, have any doubt about it. Where would they run into any visible anti-war movement like we would in the 70s and 80s? It just isn't there. And so you need creative tension. I was luckily able to confront Alexander Downer in the street in London and Boris Johnson uh, in Dublin. And Boris Johnson, as the mayor of London, spent 11 million pounds encircling Julian for three years and removed the visible cops when, just before the UN ruled it was illegal. And like, I, I stood for years across the road from the embassy, and then when I was asked to move into Hans Crescent, and I lived there for 100 days initially without leaving at all. I didn't have a shower for 100 days. And um, I just said, okay, this is where I'm stuck. And I began meeting the working poor. Many of them were refugees. Many of them were sympathetic with Julian. They were in Harrods security uniforms. Um, I met ex-special forces who had jobs guarding the princes and prince, Saudi princes who lived in the neighbourhood. I, I met all sorts of people. So you don't want to write people off, you know, because of their hairstyle or musical taste or whatever. Um, you just need to dwell amongst them and listen to them. And uh, there's, uh, you know, I met a Bosnian guy, his father was shot in front of him. 
all sorts of drama in this community, probably coming out of war, and, you know, in this place, especially the RSL. And I think the, one of the original questions did Julian Assange let Chelsea Manning down? I think there was a failure in solidarity, and that was by the civilian peace movement to people who moved into resistance, who went from beyond kind of virtual signaling saying, and the state saying, you can have your march as long as we can have our war, uh, into non-cooperation, into resistance. And both the first Gulf War and the recent one, more serious resistance in terms of the state taking it seriously and putting people in jail came out of the military than out of the civilian peace movement. And a lot of those people were abandoned. Like, there's no campaign at all around Chelsea Manning that I can see now. And uh, as someone said, you know, there's been historic examples of a journalist going to jail for not revealing their source. This is one of the few occasions where a source is in jail for not snitching on the journalist, you know. So, um, so you know, solidarity is, you know, I believe if 1% if of the people who marched against that war, and it was one and a half million in London, had gone to jail in non-violent resistance, and the other 99% who marched had dealt with hysterical parents, fed the cat, supported them, we could have stopped that war. You know, that would have been like 15,000 people in England. And we've got to learn about solidarity. We don't all have to be in prison. But if we have a serious movement, they will take our people and they will put them in prison and kill some of them, you know, as we found out in Timor. Yeah.